Now I'm going to talk about the problems that may occur around the time of transplantation. These problems can be grouped into three categories. A, the problems associated with the surgery of transplantation. B, the problems specific to renal transplantation. And C, the problems associated with anti-rejection medication. At the time of surgery, there is a risk of bleeding. And if this is heavy, you may require blood transfusion. You may have to be taken back to theater for your wound to be reopened to control the bleeding. During your recovery in hospital, you may develop an infection, which includes infection of your wound, chest infection, or urine infection. You would have received antibiotics at the time of your operation to prevent this happening. In the unlikely event you do develop an infection, this will be treated with additional antibiotics and wound care if required. There's also a risk of blood clot formation in the veins of the leg, known as deep vein thrombosis or DVT. This is a potentially serious problem as blood clots can dislodge and travel towards the heart. This can occasionally be fatal. The medical team takes various precautions to prevent DVT. We ask you to lose weight if you are overweight and stop smoking before surgery. You will receive injections to thin your blood. You will have compression stockings in both legs to empty your veins. Following your discharge from hospital, the risk of DVT may still remain, particularly if you are inactive. The risk of DVT gets less and less the further away from surgery you get. You may develop an area of numbness, usually below the wound. This numbness will reduce in size and disappear in due course. Occasionally, it may persist, but will have no consequence to your long-term health. There is about 1 in 20 risk of developing a hernia through the transplant wound. If you do develop a hernia, we suggest to have it repaired, which usually means having another operation. There is a risk of kidney going into sleep mode following the transplantation. This is dependent on the type of transplantation. About 1 in 20 living donor transplantation and 1 in 3 deceased donor transplantation will not work immediately and go into sleep mode after transplantation. It will normally start working after a few days, but may take a few weeks or occasionally longer. You may require dialysis during this period. The risk of kidney not working at all is very small and is about 1 in 50. There is a 1 in 10 chance of developing a rejection after renal transplantation. Most of the rejections will happen within the first year and usually within the first three months after transplantation. Most of the rejections can be treated with additional medication, usually a steroid. Indeed, it is extremely rare to lose a transplant because of rejection. There may be clogging or thrombosis of blood vessels supplying the kidney, which in most cases will require a removal of the transplant. Occasionally, the blood vessels supplying the kidney will develop narrowing, which require treatment by stretching and placing a stent inside the blood vessel in the radiology department. There may be leak from the ureter that joins the transplant kidney to the bladder and sometimes there is an obstruction. These may require additional procedure including surgery. Occasionally there is a collection of fluid called lymphocele which requires a drainage tube to be inserted in the radiology department and often requires further surgery. The long-term risk of immunosuppression include diabetes, infection, and cancer. The diabetes may improve after three months with the lowering of the dose of immunosuppression. Occasionally, the diabetes may persist and require treatment with insulin. The risk of infection is highest in the first three months. We advise you to avoid contact with infected persons or being in closed, crowded spaces for a long period of time. 
Patients on long-term immunosuppression are at a higher risk of developing cancer compared to general population. The commonest cancer after transplantation include skin cancer and cancer of lymph glands, also known as lymphomas. Skin cancer are common in fair-skinned people with exposure to sunlight. We advise you to avoid prolonged exposure to direct sunlight and take usual precautions like covering yourself or applying sun blocking cream when you're out in the sun. Some of the donors carry higher than standard risks. These include older donors, donors with hypertension, diabetes, donors with infection, donors with history of cancer, donors with high risk social behavior, and donors with a history of intravenous drug abuse. These put them at a higher than normal risk of carrying infection. Transplantation has been performed successfully and safely from these donors. The medical team will do everything they can to minimize the risk to you. This includes doing further tests on the donor, giving you antibiotics to reduce the chance of infection, and keeping you under close observation after transplantation. You will be given full information at the time and a choice whether to accept the kidney before proceeding to transplantation. Occasionally, you will be offered two kidneys for transplantation. This is done in two situations. A, when one kidney is not expected to provide sufficient function after transplantation. This is the case usually in older donors. The operation of dual transplantation takes longer and as a general rule is not offered to patients who have history of cardiac disease or circulation problem. B. Kidneys from small children and babies are offered for on-block transplantation of both kidneys. This is because if these kidneys are transplanted singly, they carry a high risk of early failure. These kidneys will grow to meet the demand of an adult body and they usually work well for a long time. Despite the best care, there are risks of complications, including the risk of death, which is one in a hundred. Overall, one in 20 transplant will be lost within the first year due to unavoidable complications.